Hello, I'm Mark Moreno from Dynatrace One, and today I'll be talking to you about how to monitor Azure functions using Dynatrace. We'll be looking into what Azure functions are and into the different monitoring strategies that you can choose when you want to monitor Azure functions using Dynatrace. So basically, Azure functions are serverless computing services uh, offered by Microsoft Azure that allow you to run small pieces of code uh, without worrying or needing to uh, manage any infrastructure uh, that's uh, powering or running this code. These functions uh, can be triggered by various uh, methods, such as HTTP requests, uh, database changes, or even uh, function timers. And Dynatrace provides two different approaches to monitor these Azure functions, because Azure functions come on in two different flavors. We've got uh, Azure functions running on app service plans and Azure functions running on consumption plans. The functions that are running in uh, app service plans uh, basically have a dedicated app service plan which uh, has an underlying host that we can access. And thus we can install a one agent in that host and uh, easily monitor uh, the functions just uh, by installing this agent, uh, clicking a single uh, of things in the Azure portal. However, then we also have the Azure functions running in consumption plans. And these are basically offered in a serverless fashion. And this means that we do not have access to the underlying host that's powering uh, these functions. And um, this obviously has some restrictions. Uh, and this means that we cannot install a one agent there because we don't have access to the underlying infrastructure. And these functions have to be monitored uh, using open telemetry. But both of them can be uh, instrumented using uh, Dynatrace and monitored uh, using Dynatrace. So uh, first of all, we'll begin with the Azure functions running on an app service plan. We support uh, monitoring the Azure functions that are written in .NET uh, and that are hosted on an app service plan running on a Windows host. If your function uh, has it, uh, or meets these requisites, then you can instrument it uh, using full stack monitoring powered by one agent. And the deployment of this one agent uh, into the Azure app service plan is super easy and can be performed from the Azure portal. Uh, the only requirements that you need is a pass token so that the uh, Azure uh, services can uh, download the one agent and install it into the app service, uh, an app service function that you want to monitor, and the environment ID of the Dynatrace uh, environment or, or tenant where you want to monitor uh, these functions. Let's uh, move to a demo in which I'll show you how to configure uh, all this so that uh, we can see how to monitor uh, an Azure function that's running on an app service plan. So obviously, first thing we'll need is to create an Azure app function that will deploy to an Azure environment. And later on, I'll show you how to instrument it. You can develop a uh, code for Azure functions using any development tool or IDE that you prefer. But in this case, I will be using Visual Studio Code because it's a free editor and it has a lot of useful extensions for developing Azure functions. In this case, we'll be working with the Azure Tools extension, which basically let us uh, connect to an Azure environment and interact with the, all the resources under that environment. And it's also very useful because it allows us to create um, all the boilerplate code required to build Azure functions. So we can click here and go to create new function. We'll just have to choose the folder where we want to store all the files and folders for our Azure function. And click here. We'll have to choose a language and a runtime for our function. In this case, I will be choosing uh, the .NET framework. And uh, next step will be to choose uh, the event that will trigger our function execution. In this case, I will just select an HTTP trigger, which will provide an endpoint for us. And once we call this endpoint, the function will be executed. Next thing will be to provide a name and a namespace. And finally, we'll have to choose the access rights that are needed for executing this function. Since this is a demo, I'll just uh, select anonymous uh, Azure function. And this will start creating the files and folders uh, that are needed for uh, our Azure function. So you can check under the File Explorer, there's not any uh, Dynatrace or one agent file. So this is just a normal uh, C-sharp.net project. And it's basically a very simple function, which will be executed whenever we perform a get or a post request, and it will respond by displaying this text. In this case, it will be welcome from Dynatrace or welcome Azure functions from Dynatrace. Once we are happy with the code in our Azure function, 
we can go to run and start debugging. And this will start building our project. And if everything went well, it will provide us a, a local endpoint that we can use to start testing our function. Looks like everything went well. So I can copy this endpoint and go here to a local browser and execute the function. As you can see, it's working and it's returning us the text, welcome as your function from Dynatrace. So now that we're happy with our function, it's time to deploy it to an Azure App Service plan. We'll go again to the Azure Tools extension by clicking here, and we can see the different resources that we've got in, in this environment. One of them is this uh, app function uh, in a service plan. So what I will do is to choose our local Azure function, click here, and choose deploy to function app. Now, uh, the Azure Tools extension will make me choose the subscription and the uh, service plan where I want to deploy this function. And in this case, it's this one here. And I can click here. And this will uh, ask me if I'm sure that I want to deploy the function here. I can click here. And now uh, Visual Studio Code is deploying our Azure function to the Azure portal. Meanwhile, I can show you that this is a, a, a Windows-based app service plan. Wait, this is this service plan here. And we can see that this is uh, running uh, on a Windows host. And now the app function is being deployed here. So we just have to wait a little bit. We can check the output and looks like the deployment was successful. As you can see here, the deployment was completed. Now we'll go to our Azure portal again, and now uh, we'll check that this is indeed working. So we can click on the deployed function, refresh this, and get the function URL. I can copy it to the clipboard. And we can see that this is working indeed. So it's returning us the same text, but now this is deployed in our Azure App Service plan. Now let's see the interesting part. That's how to instrument this with Dynatrace. So basically we need to go to the service plan that's powering this uh, Azure function. And we'll see uh, if we go here, we'll see we've got this uh, development tool section and we should click on extensions. I'll just make this bigger. And we see that we don't have any extensions installed yet. So we can click on add extensions and we'll have to look for the one agent extension. You can see, we click here, we'll have to uh, accept the terms and conditions and we are able to add the site extension. So we can see here, this will take a, a little bit, but this should add the site extension here. Meanwhile, uh, one of the requisites is to have a, a pass token. I have already created that uh, behind the scenes, but I will show you how to do it. We can go to our Dynatrace tenant, go to access tokens, click on generate new token and select uh, the template for pass token. We generate the token, we'll copy it and save it somewhere safe. And later on, we'll have to use this token to configure the, the one agent for the, for the app service. Great, so once the extension has been uh, installed successfully, we can click on top of it and this will display the extension details and the description. And to configure it, we should go to Advanced Tools. So we click here under Advanced Tools, we click on Go. So this will take us to the Kudu uh, Site Extensions uh, Management Control for our App Service Plan. And we can see that we'll have this uh, Site Extensions tab, which we can click. And uh, basically, we'll see the Dynatrace One Agent extension, which we added previously. We should click on launch, and this is going to show us the screen or page in which we can add uh, the details for the one agent configuration. 
First of all, we'll uh, use the environment ID. Basically, uh, every environment in Dynatrace has a URL which lets you connect to the environment. And all these URLs uh, have this environment uh, ID at the beginning. In this case, I'm using this environment. So I'll just copy uh, this environment ID and I'll paste it here uh, in the corresponding field. Next thing uh, I will need is a pass token, uh, which has the uh, necessary permissions for the Azure App Services to download the one agent and install it into our app service plan. I have already created this beforehand, so I'll just copy it and paste it here. And finally, we need our uh, environment URL. This can also be extracted uh, or, or it's the same as our uh, environment URL that we use to connect to Dynatrace. Uh, even though it's not explained here, it's required to add slash API uh, after the URL. So I will just be using this URL for my environment and adding slash API. Once I have configured this, I can just click install one agent. And this will make a, a call to the Dynatrace environment, download the one agent. And once the download is complete, uh, the installation will begin. So now we just have to wait while the one agent downloads. This will take a few minutes and we can see that now the download is complete and the installation is beginning. After a few minutes, we see that the installation is complete. One agent is installed and up to date. And now we just need to go back to the uh, Kudu services and restart our site by clicking this button. Meanwhile, we'll also restart our app function. So we go back to our Azure portal. And basically we're restarting uh, all these uh, app function, function apps and app, um, service plan and site so that uh, one agent detects the process of the function and can auto-instrument it. So I'll just restart this. And with this, the setup is complete. So I will get the function URL again by clicking on the function name. We have it here. I will just copy it to get the clipboard and check that the function is still working. Uh, the service is unavailable because uh, everything is restarting. But if we give it a couple of minutes, the function should be available. After waiting a few minutes, we can see uh, that the restart is completed successfully and the function is working again. And basically by executing some, some requests, we see that the function is responding with the corresponding text that we set up. So uh, this means that the one agent deployment is already working. And the way that we can check this is by going to our Dynatrace tenant, and we'll see uh, here that we have a new service detected out of the box by the uh, Dynatrace one agent. In this case, is this uh, HTTP trigger function, and we can see that we are already having some uh, data uh, collected by the one agent. Basically, uh, thanks to the one agent instrumentation, this is monitored as uh, any uh, type typical Dynatrace service. So we've got all our topological information, uh, the request information card, and all the familiar tools that we can use to understand dependencies, such as service flow, backtrace, uh, distributed traces, and logs. We can see that this is running in an IIS pool on the underlying Windows host that's powering uh, our app service plan. And we can also check this host going here. So we can perform drill downs for this service. And we can see uh, under properties and tags that this is uh, uh, an, an Azure website uh, host and that this is a Windows host here. So uh, basically this is what's giving us the resources to execute the, the, the Azure function. And then the Azure function is monitored as a service. So we can see a response time, failure rate, a CPU consumption, throughput. We can create any multidimensional analysis or, or we can uh, inspect the different requests by going to uh, distributed traces. And here we will leverage all the pure path uh, capabilities. So we can go to any of the function invocations and we'll be able to see uh, a summary of, of that request 
uh, we'll see that this is instrumented with the one agent. We can see all the trace metadata and information about the Azure functions. And we can see timing information, uh, threat uh, execution breakdowns, code level information, which is very useful for debugging, and logs in case we had configured this. So uh, as you can see, uh, we got this all out of the box. It's like instrumenting any uh, other process or technology with one agent, and setup is super easy. So we just saw how easy it is to instrument uh, Azure functions running on an app service plan in which we have access to the underlying uh, servers or infrastructure. There, we just deploy one agent and it, the one agent will take care of monitoring the function for us. However, uh, what happens in cases in which we do not have uh, access to the underlying servers or infrastructure because the offering is serverless itself? This is the case of uh, Azure functions that are running consumption plans uh, and these Azure functions let you run code without provisioning or managing uh, uh, the servers. And in this case, open telemetry needs to be used to monitor the Azure functions. Dynatrace provides language specific packages, which you just import into your, uh, into your function code. And once you deploy the function code to the Azure portal, uh, in the build process, the packages will be installed and the open telemetry support will be added to your functions. So we support off of the box Azure functions written in .NET, in Node.js, and in Python. And right now, I'll show you how to uh, add these uh, open telemetry libraries to a function written in Python and how uh, easy it is to get this monitoring data into Dynatrix. So uh, in this case, I will be using a pre-made uh, Python function, which I created beforehand because we already went into, or we already looked into how to create Azure functions using Visual Studio Code. This is also a very simple uh, Azure function, which uh, will just take a query string parameter and use it to uh, get a name of the person that's calling this Azure function and respond with a name in the response. Uh, in order to instrument this using OpenTelemetry, we have to add the Dynatrix uh, language-specific uh, package for OpenTelemetry and Azure Functions. In this case, since this is Python, I have added into requirements.txt Dynatrix OpenTelemetry Azure Functions package. Once we have this, we can import all the necessary modules into the main uh, function uh, or Python function file. In this case, I have imported the OpenTelemetry modules here at the top, and then I have configured the OpenTelemetry tracer provider. Finally, we can import the wrap handler, and we will use this wrap handle to wrap any functions that we want to trace uh, using open telemetry. All this documentation can be, can, be, can be found in our public documentation, specifically in the Azure functions integrate and um, consumption plan. So by clicking here, we can see the different um, libraries and packages that we offer to simplify this instrumentation with, with open telemetry. Then last thing that we need to do is to tell uh, this Azure function how uh, or, or, or how will it communicate with the Dynatrace environment. To do the, that, we've got two op, uh, options. We can either use environment variables or a configuration JSON. And the way in which we can get that uh, configuration JSON or variables is from our Dynatrace tenant. So we go to our Dynatrace tenant, we go to deploy Dynatrace, and we'll see that uh, if we click in start installation, we'll see that Dynatrace One Agent can be deployed in lots of different technologies. But in this case, we're interested in Azure functions. So we'll click here and we'll see um, that we can choose to configure this with environment variables or with a JSON file. So um, this is going to give us a connection token and a connection URL. And then uh, we can uh, also choose to use a JSON file. And we have to set or, or, or copy the values from the JSON file and create a dtconfig.json file in the root of our Azure function project and paste all the configuration here. So uh, once we've done that, uh, we are ready to deploy our function and I have already done this, so I will show it to you. This uh, HTTP example function is deployed in this function app, which is Mark Nueno app function consumption plan, and it's already deployed. So uh, 
during the deployment process, uh, obviously uh, Azure went through the requirements txt file, so that library that we imported and, and, and installed it, so that now we we have these uh, open telemetry tracing capabilities. I can get our function URL, copy it to our clipboard, and execute our function. Uh, you can see that uh, we're not passing any name in the query string. So I'll just, for example, uh, pass my name. And uh, we can check that the Azure function is executing correctly. So let's create a couple of requests. And now let's see how does the instrumentation differ to the to the to the instrumentation with the one agent. So let's go back to our tenant, go to services, and we should see that the uh, Azure function has already been detected here under services. So after some some time, we can already see the the metrics uh, coming here, and basically out of the box for open telemetry monitored uh, Azure functions, we get this service overview card and these uh, distributed traces here, the related services, events, and related logs in case they are available. And uh, these function metrics that we're seeing here are coming through an Azure integration that's powered by the Active Gate. So out of the box, we will be getting this, but I have already integrated the um, Azure uh, integration in this environment. And this is basically pulling in metrics from Azure Monitor and enriching all the monitor entities in our Dynatrace environment. So uh, for any of the traces that we can check here, uh, we can see that uh, we've got all the trace metadata, uh, the request headers, uh, metadata, topology information. Uh, this is a function as a service coming from Azure in this uh, consumption plan. And we also have timing information and code level information, but here the code level information is not derived uh, automatically by the automatic in, uh, instrumentation, but instead we've had to manually wrap uh, the functions uh, to get this tracing. Uh, we will also have logs in case the, we configure that. And basically this is how you would uh, see a uh, a Python uh, Azure uh, function on a consumption plan. So I hope this session was helpful and that was all for today.